everybody's talking about Tua, okay? Everybody's talking about Jalen Hurts. Everybody's super excited about Miami and, and Philly. Um, what I think is is really interesting to me is that you look at these two teams and going into training camp, one of the, you know, the conversation I had when I went to Philly was like, hey, you guys are in a good position here. Um, if this doesn't work out with Jalen Hurts, you got draft picks to make noise. This is this to me would be the really um hot, trendy place if for some reason a veteran quarterback suddenly wants to leave his team, as we've seen in recent years happen, the last couple off seasons. This is a place players should want to come. A quarterback should want to come here. If you want to be the next, you know, Russ, where you're, you know, gonna push your way out, you I would push my way out to Philly. So you have the potential of a veteran coming in here, you can use your draft picks to go and get one of the plethora of quarterbacks that are supposed to be first round picks. But no, I mean, Jalen Hurts has checked off every box that I think they wanted him to check off up until this point. So a lot of season left. Um, and I think that Miami is, is in this boat, obviously they lost one of the first round draft picks that they had because of the tampering scandal. But these are two franchises that to me, given the amount of resources that were going to have to be marshaled, to potentially fix the quarterback position, all of a sudden, if you have two quarterbacks in position in Miami and Philly, both franchises, the future looks exponentially brighter because now you're sitting there staring at resources where you're like, oh, no, actually, we we don't have to screw with the resources. Um, we have resources now to build around these two players, and we love it moving forward. But which of these two franchises are you taking building around their particular quarterback and, and moving forward? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Because I think what's interesting is that the biggest question I would say of Jalen Hurts before this season is really what kind of development and ceiling he had in the passing game. And he's really got that. I mean, it's like his yards per game is up 100 yards per game. Yeah, it's he's crazy. just like, it's just like massively skyrocketing his yards per attempt, his yards per catch. Like on every metric, he's showing that this area of his game that wasn't as strong is now super strong. Now, again, it's been three weeks. I think from what we've seen as of now, I would take Tua, but I think that by the end of the season, I could easily be convinced for Jalen. I think that like Jalen, it's almost like if you're looking at that graph, Jalen's slope is steeper in terms of what he's proven in this season so far, in my opinion, but Tua is at a higher point right now. Yeah, I. that's a tough question um, because I, I, I think kind of what is exciting about Jalen Hurts is he's kind of like incomplete as as a passer. I mean, the, the the fact that the Eagles have been able to build this this passing offense and they aren't even really throwing to the middle of the field that much. I don't know, maybe it makes you think, hey, if he can get to a spot where, you know, you're attempting some of these passes over the middle of the field a bit more and you're connecting on them, then is that a situation where we're looking like, holy crap, like we just drafted a top eight quarterback with a second round pick. Like that, that little you know, unknown upside to me, just like that area from being a pastor is kind of curious. But at the same time with Tua, like right now you're showing at least that you you can, w- with the help of Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, you can really be a team that throws down the field and generates explosive plays that will. I mean, even against the Bills this past week, and they didn't run them many plays, but I'm pretty sure Tua averaged like over 10 yards in attempt. And we all saw what happened uh, in the fourth quarter of that Baltimore game. It's an interesting question, uh, but I think I might I might go with Jalen Hurst because I, I tend to like the quarterbacks who can really run, and I think what makes Jalen special so far and what's really made him special since he was going all the way back to Alabama is he's a quarterback that can run like a running back. When it's time to set up blocks and run between the tackles and make guys miss at the second level, he's someone that does that at a really high level, and now you're really starting to see uh, some of the accuracy issues fix over time with him. So if he can just be a guy that's that's going to you know take more chances over the middle of the field and maybe see the field a little bit faster, that that to me is like really really exciting upside for the Eagles. One of the things that I think is it's interesting that you know everybody's making a lot about you know who are the undefeated teams that you know obviously you have you have Philly and Miami, but if we looked at like and and. I feel like most people are still holding out on Tua, and yet I feel like a ton of people are buying in on Jalen. Everyone's talking about Jalen MVP numbers and, you know, oh, you know, Tua had this big game, but let's, you know, wait and see in the long run. And then the thing is, though, look at the wins. Like, it's crazy to me that people are sitting there. Philly's beating the Lions. 
the Vikings, and the Commanders. Okay? Look at who Tua and, and the Miami Dolphins have beat. You beat the Patriots? You beat the Ravens? And you beat the Bills? What the hell? It's not even remotely close. Literally, Miami has beaten three teams that are probably all better than every single team that Philly has beaten. 